Hey, what's going on guys? It's Adam from Spirited Systems. And today we're gonna talk about a new product that we're coming out with. Uh, it is the LBV Expander Kit. So we're gonna back up a little bit though and we're gonna talk about a different product that we have called the Split Rig or the 34 Alpha. Uh, this guy, if you know of him, then uh, this is a product that works in conjunction with this kit. Uh, so you can check out our 34 Alpha video. We'll link it somewhere or in the in the bio or whatever. But uh, yeah, you can check that video out. So if you don't have a 34 Alpha split rig, then you're gonna have to have one of those for this kit to work. This kit is not going to work alone. Uh, it is an expansion for the 34 Alpha. So let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is just the component breakdown. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through and show you each piece that it comes with to kind of help you understand how it works and how it attaches. So when you get your uh, kit, you're gonna have the actual uh, butt pack piece of it, right? This is the kind of the meat of the whole system. Uh, and this is what we're actually adapting to the 34 Alpha split rig. I'm gonna open it up. And inside we have uh, two components. We have a new strap set. We have a sternum strap for the strap set. And then we have the butt pack itself, right? So. Those are, those are all three pieces, that's, that's all you need. Uh, it's, it's gonna adapt this butt pack to the split rig, uh, giving you a more traditional load-bearing style uh, kit. So a couple of things that it isn't, right? This is not a belt kit, right? So if you're a, a British guy and you're used to having a, a very solid webbing belt uh, on kind of your lower back spreading out to your hips, and you have a bunch of pouches on that, um, that is not what this is. So LBV load bearing vest is because it, uh, it basically is a vest that we're expanding onto and you wear it a little differently. Whereas a belt kit uh, traditionally is worn pretty low and uh, low on the hips uh, with a lot of equipment on the back. Uh, this still affords you the ability to have some of the equipment a little further forward uh, where it's more easily accessible, uh, but also giving you the ability to have uh, this expansion on the backside. Um, and why did we make it? Well, we've been predicting th this kind of trench warfare reality for the last few years. Uh, Spiritus has always kind of prided ourselves at looking forward into what is what is going to be faced by the soldier instead of just what they're facing today. Uh, and we think that our guys are going to need the ability to self-support. So this is set up so that a guy can self-support, right? Whereas the 34 Alpha is a great rig, a uh, great base uh, for a guy to have because he can ride in vehicles, he can do uh, a lot of different mission sets, have a big rucksack on um, and not have anything kind of in his way, uh, but he can also adapt it to uh, carry more equipment just on the rig itself by using this uh, expander kit. So let's talk about the butt pack. So it's a, it's a roll top closure. Um, and we did that because we want you to be able to expand the capacity. So if you see, you know, how tall this is right now, um, I could load this all the way up and then only have one uh, or two rolls on this and then I can buckle it down, right? So I can have, I can actually carry quite a bit of stuff. Uh, I can button it all the way up if I want and then it's just not so big. It is a side closure, so because it's a roll top, so you basically just uh, buckle the sides. These are have very long adjustment straps on them so that you can uh, accommodate that you know extra capacity if you need it. Uh, the bag is just made out of 500 denier Cordura like a lot of our products. It is not uh, inherently waterproof. It does have stitches in it. Uh, it is DWR treated, so it's gonna take a light rain, but I recommend using uh, some kind of wet weather bag. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, like most of our pouches, it has a external zipper pocket. And this is, it's a small, you know, pocket. I mean, maybe, you know, two hands wide. 
of, of space. It does have internal tie down loops in it to keep sensitive items uh, if you have something sensitive that you want to put in there. I like to use this for uh, small administrative items like weapons cleaning kit, uh, spare batteries, things like that, stuff that I want to get to uh, pretty quickly without opening up the entire uh, butt pack. Each side has um, two columns of molly. And uh, we, we didn't just put the, those there as a way just to attach anything. We did have something in mind, and that is uh, using some kind of water bottle pouch, right? Uh, we wanted to give you the ability to carry uh, more water with this, with this uh, butt pack. So uh, you can put two of our Nalgene bottle pouches on this and expand your capacity. And it, it wears actually really nice. Uh, so that's what those sides are for. Moving on to the back side, um, it looks kind of crazy. We have four uh, male ITW one inch uh, fast clips. These attach to your 34 Alpha. They are adjustable. You can see there's tri-glides on there. Um, so we can accommodate uh, different weather conditions, different clothing. If you're wearing this over a plate carrier, if you're not, if you're a big guy, if you're a small guy, this gives you a lot of adjustment. Uh, so you can really tighten this thing up or you can loosen, you know, loosen it up if you need to. So there's four of those that attaches in to the 34. And then we have these tri-glides at the top. So these tri-glides are actually there to mount your new strap set. And we're gonna talk about the straps in a second, but uh, that's what those are for. And then we have, we also have uh, Molly on the back. So if you want to, you can Molly the butt pack onto some other type of equipment. Like say you already have a belt kit uh, with all these pouches, but you're just missing the butt pack. Um, you can, you know, you can attach that, molly that onto that as well. We just wanted to give people extra options if that was uh, what they wanted to do. Um, there's, I wanted to call out these little slits here. You can see there's, you know, there's four slits. One's under here, there's two on each side. If you're going to use this uh, in a molly configuration, you can remove the buckles and all the hardware, and then you can actually tuck the straps back in underneath the molly field. So they're out of the way and they're not hanging everywhere. Just something, to, just a little note there in case, you're, in case you're wondering how you do that. So that pretty much sums up the, the butt pack portion of this. So the straps, um, we wanted to give, we wanted to carry the load a little bit better. The fat straps are not the answer. Uh, they don't have the right geometry to uh, carry something that's on your lower back, right? Because they, they kind of branch off to your sides. Uh, so we developed a, a lightweight, uh, you know, X strap. Um, so you can see, basically, when you have this, it's going to go over your over your shoulders, and then uh, it is going to form an X in the back. So your right shoulder strap is going to attach to the left side of your body. Um, and it is going to attach using tri-glides on the back. Again, we have tri-glides on the front uh, with ITW uh, hardware on there. Uh, so this is really adjustable as well for ride height. Um, so you can really pull this thing up high if you wanna wear it high or you can let it, let it go really low if you want. And then lastly, we have a, uh, a strap, a sternum strap. Uh, what guys will find is that wearing uh, a traditional uh, webbing kit, if they're coming from like a plate carrier or something like that, uh, they're gonna they're gonna notice that this is a lot like wearing a pack, right? You're gonna have you're gonna have these straps, and they're gonna want to drift out a little bit, so you can just kind of contain that by you know using the sternum strap and and pulling those straps together. Um, so those are the components, and it's it's pretty pretty simple to set this up and attach it to uh, a 34 Alpha. Uh, so basically we would be, you know, attaching the straps to the, um, the butt pack itself and then, uh, you know, the sternum strap to the straps. And then it really is just a matter of unbuckling the side buckles and then attaching the system to, you know, together. And then now we have new straps uh, and a new butt pack we take our fat strap and our back strap and we just kind of set those to the side because we don't need them anymore when we're using it in this configuration. So some considerations and some things that people have asked me about this product, uh, we get a lot of questions of how does it work when you're wearing a rucksack? Uh, and that is a, that's a good and valid question uh, because most guys who are you know, partaking in this kind of activity 
at some point are going to carry a rucksack, especially if they're in the light infantry or something like that. Um, and the answer is pretty simple. It's the same as it's always been in regards to butt packs, right? The military, we didn't invent the butt pack. The military has had butt packs for, uh, honestly, for generations. Uh, it's been it's been part of the system. Only until recently have we removed uh, this load bearing style equipment uh, from our uh, from our inventory, and we've switched over to plate carriers and things like that. So our, our memory, you know, of the people currently serving or the people in the last you know ten years or so, they they never use this stuff. Uh, but the but there's the same problem of having a rucksack on, right? So this product. Uh, if it's full and it's on your lower back, you know, you're not going to be able to wear a rucksack efficiently. Uh, so the way we were forced to do it in the infantry was you would lower the entire system below your Alice pack frame. So your butt pack would actually sit below that, right? Uh, it, it wasn't a huge deal if you're you know, 6'2 or something like that, and you're really tall. Uh, but for shorter guys, it really sucked because, you know, the butt pack would be riding on the back of your legs and just slapping you the whole time you're, you're, you're walking. Uh, so what I would do is I would wear my LBE at the proper height, which is, you know, around the, around the waist or maybe even a little higher, and I would remove the contents from my butt pack and put them inside my rucksack while I was rucking. Uh, and I would keep them in a separate wet weather bag so that I could grab them very quickly and stuff them back into uh, the butt pack, which is how I recommend using it if you are going to be rucking a lot. Because you can have essential patrol items inside of a small wet weather bag, and then those items can be placed inside here when you stop, right? If you're gonna Set a set a patrol base, and then you're going to go out on a on a security patrol or a screening patrol. Um, you're going to leave your rucksack behind with the main element, anyways, and you can, you know, take those items out of your ruck, stuff them in your butt pack, and then you can go out on patrol. And now you have that added capacity to carry those things. When you get back, say you're going to put your ruck back on, and you're going to move out, go, you know, and, and walk 12 miles or something. Take it all out. Uh, seal it all up, and then your ruck frame will just rest on it, and it's not a big deal at all. Uh, you'll basically not even realize that it's, it's there. So that's, that's how I recommend using it, and that's how I use mine. Uh, so coming back to the theory of this product, uh, the theory is that guys are going to need more stuff, right? Uh, the global war on terror as far as the United States is concerned, has really scarred our collective uh, training and reasoning. Uh, we see things from a lens um, that is admittedly a little shallow. So we think that there's going to be a support apparatus. We think that we're going to own the, you know, the air, air bridge and we're going to have all of these supplies that are coming in and, uh, and supporting you know, the guy on the ground. But the truth is, is the guy on the ground should be preparing for the eventuality that he has no support at all. And we've learned this lesson before. We have had elements get you know cut off, stuck behind enemy lines, a lot of stuff in Vietnam, a lot of stuff in World War II or Korea. Uh, we have examples of guys getting left behind and left to their own devices, right? So how do they do that? How do they survive? Well, it's, it comes back to this field craft aspect of having the equipment you need on your person. Uh, it can't be in a vehicle somewhere. It can't be, you know, on a helicopter waiting to come in later. Uh, if you're a Marine, um, it can't be on your, you know, your duck bag or whatever, like getting getting ready to come ashore because that's never coming, right? Uh, the Marines are a great example of getting left behind repeatedly throughout the Pacific campaign in uh World War II, and that largely inspired the need for this, uh, is just case studying that, right? You have guys uh, who get, the Navy comes in, you know, in a, in a big battle group, drops a bunch of Marines, and then they're, they're opposed. In some way, they have to leave uh, to, to basically save a ship, right, so that it's not getting destroyed. Now guys are left behind. What do they have on their kit? That's all they have, right? So that's what this is for. Is if you know your if you know that that situation might happen, you should be carrying extra items, extra things, water purification, things like that. So I'm going to pull out an example out of this guy right here. 
This is a big old LBV that we set up for a different video. Um, if you want to check that out, it's the machine gunner kit video that we released, I don't know, like maybe a couple months ago or something. Um, but we show this rig in that and we talk about kind of a loadout for machine gunners. So you can check that out if you want to. But I'm gonna pull out here. This is just an example, guys. I just wanna give you an example of what you might keep inside of uh, you know, your, your butt pack, right? So this is a wet weather bag. Um, it's a sea line bag. It's like neon green, maybe not the best color, but if you look at the other colors, it's, it's kinda is what it is. Uh, I like this one because it has uh, a window on it. Um, I like being able to see inside and you know know exactly where and what I'm trying to dig out or to, to know if that item is in there still. Uh, but it is a wet weather bag, so this can be completely submerged. Types of items that I'm gonna be keeping in my butt pack are largely things that I don't need to wage war, right? I don't need, I'm not putting frag grenades in this. I'm not putting things that I need access to immediately. That's gonna be, uh, you know, distributed amongst my, my body elsewhere. But things that I am gonna keep in here are things like my shelter, right? Some kind of uh, poncho, the US GI poncho, whatever. Uh, this is an experimental thing we've been working on for a couple of years, but uh, you need to have this, right? You need some way to get yourself out of the elements or uh, if you're watching our machine gun video, you need some way to cover up essential equipment, right? If you're a mortar dude, if you're a machine gunner, you need a way to uh, cover those items up. I always keep, this is just lessons learned for me, I always keep a lightweight wind layer from the uh, Equix system. I always keep something like that, right? This is just a shirt uh, that I can toss on to get some, get out of the wind, get some extra warmth. Um, I've shown this on a lot of videos. I really like it. It's a Wild Things product, but anyone who makes for the Equix systems, their, their version will work as well. I prefer that one because it has a hood. Uh, mosquito net, it's, it's optional and it's, it's dependent on where you're going to be, um, but you can get really sick because of the mosquitoes, so it's, it's good to have a net, something lightweight, something small. And then I always keep um, gloves and a beanie. That's like a non-negotiable for me. So uh, those are all items that are centered around me, right? You can add to that, obviously, you can take away from it, but those are all things that if I'm planning on not coming back or no one coming to give me extra stuff, eventually I'm gonna have to sleep, right? I'm gonna have to, to bed down somewhere uh, and I wanna have items that you know will support me to keep me in the fight. And those largely come down to keeping my uh, temperature regulated and stuff like that, keeping myself healthy. And then I'll also keep in here the old MER, the old MRE. So just a stripped down version, right? That's gonna have uh, stuff that I am not planning on necessarily consuming. Um, it's more of an emergency thing. A lot of times I'll keep uh, aqua tabs, things like that, like spare um, water purification stuff inside that as well. Uh, so that's gonna have like high calorie things that I do not have to have any kind of uh, cooking process, right? So it doesn't have to be an MRE, but um, anything that I can just eat on the go, like literally walking and I can pull out and stuff in my mouth and, uh, and eat as I'm going. Plus, you know, like I said, water purification, uh, things like that. So those are the types of items that I'm gonna be keeping in my, my butt pack, right? On the inverse, using the system that I'm recommending where we pull something out of our ruck and we put it in there, I'm not going to keep mission essential equipment inside of that, right? Because that stuff should all be up on the front here in other pouches so that I can, uh, no matter what, if I have to drop my ruck and go immediately, I still have that mission essential equipment. So, you know, quart of water, my night vision, all of those things, they're not living in the butt pack. The butt pack is truly for that 24, 48 hour expansion of my patrol kit so that I can, uh, you know, go off and do that. So a couple other points I wanna talk about. Um, this guy right here, this guy right here, he's really big, right? He, he looks really, he, there's like a lot of stuff going on. 
and uh, I just want to address it because the way I have this set up uh, may not be uh, easily done right out of the box if you if you don't know uh, how to do it, right? So I have two uh, Nalgene pouches just to give you an idea of kind of what that looks like, right? This is very stable and it works actually really well. But I'm gonna flip it over so you can see, because I have two small GP pouches attached to the straps right here that literally attach the 34 Alpha to the butt pack, right? Um, I just use the belt pass-through on the pouch, right? Uh, that's how I'm fill, filling that oblique spot. Now, the pouch does have the ability to, to cant a little bit, but what I found is that by putting, you know, when you have items in it, it just doesn't do that because they're because of gravity, right? So it's just holding it there. So this is a very fast way to be able to put pouches on and take them off uh, just by utilizing that belt pass-through that is organic on almost every pouch that we make. Uh, it's just a little tip there. So if you're looking at this kit or if you look at the machine gun video and it's confusing you because there are, you know, these pouches on either side of the butt pack, that's what that is. This is just a small GP pouch and it's just stuck through the belt pass through and it works quite well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the LBE uh, kit video. Um, but if you guys could do me a favor, you should check out our patrol basics videos. We, uh, we do a lot, we're, we're putting a lot of information out. And if this is the kind of stuff, this is more of a product demo. If you're looking for that more in-depth kind of information on stuff, patrol basic videos, uh, I don't know, is it gonna pop up somewhere on the screen this way? It's gonna pop this way. So, ta-da, check it out. Uh, it, it helps us out, but it also helps get the word out uh, and you know, share it if you think it's good. We're trying to educate the next generation of warfighters, so help us out. But I appreciate it, as always, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, being a customer of Spirited Systems, and we'll see you next time.